Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for being here this evening. Uh, I'm Shirley Azak. I'm your Ward 7 City Councilor, and we're here this evening at North um, Middle School. And this evening's meeting is pretty particular. It's on a development. It's on uh, regarding the Augusta Ave Estate subdivision. And um, we have many of the abutters here. So if you live on Augusta Ave Extension, Prospect Street, parts of Prospect Street, parts of Cross Street, Cross Ave, Angela Terrace, Cassieri Court, Earl Street, and um, part of North Ash Street, you're abutters to this property. And that's why you've been invited to this meeting. Um, the, uh, we, this evening, we have here with us, uh, first of all, our city planner, Mr. Rob Mays, here in the audience. We have Mr. Bill Self, which is the engineer, and Attorney McCluskey, who is the attorney uh, for this project. Uh, the way this meeting is going to run this evening, um, Mr. Self has brought some of the um, plans, so they're out in the audience for you to take a, a close look at. And then, um, they, this project was before the planning board last year, and um, many residents came before the planning board, had some concerns, many of you here I see here this evening, and we just want you to know that your uh, questions or your, uh, you know, what your suggestions have been taken uh, into consideration, and there, the, there has been changes made to these plans. And I believe Mr. Self can go over that, just some, some of the changes that have been made from um, last year. This uh, project will be before the planning board meeting, Tuesday, October 6th at 6 p.m. Uh, it is a virtual meeting, so it's via Zoom. That's why this evening it's important if you're here that we can get a close look at um, the plans. So once again, thank you for being here, and I'm gonna turn the mic over to Mr. Self. Stuck together. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. My name is Bill Self. I'm with Curly and Hanson. Uh, uh, we did have a pre-meeting uh, for the uh, last year, pretty much around this time, when we first submitted. Get it closer to your mouth. You need the mic to say something. Okay. <laughs> uh, and there were, there, there were some concerns that we had listened to for some of the, the, the neighbors, mostly directly, I believe, uh, we were down at Augusta Ave, where the existing homes are. And uh, that we've concentrated on. They, they brought up the point of uh, being afraid of drainage, water conditions now, things of that nature. So, you know, that's one of the main things we've, we've put in a plan. What you see here is the overall lotting of the plan. That's the plan that you have if you're, if you're, if you're looking at the plan uh, that was passed out. It's on a 40 scale. We do have the individual lots a little bit better, more re more of a detail on a 20 scale, and I'll show you those. Uh, if uh, anyone is you know, particularly interested where you are, and if whatever your questions are, if, if it was uh, okay for them to come up, Shirley, is that, uh, is that okay? And then you could point out where it is and, and whatever questions you might have, uh, we could answer. Our original, pro, uh, original uh, proposal was a total of 18 lots. Uh, out of those 18, we, 18 lots, we had two lots that were not buildable lots. One lot was designated to be a small sliver to be combined with the abutting land of the house that's on Augusta. And the second lot was a, a lot at the intersection of the two streets here. It was, uh, that's just been designated for drainage only, so that is not a buildable lot. So from the 18, uh, we also incorporated some of the some of the recommendations uh, from the board members as far as the width of the lots. They, I think there was a, a lot of concern with what they're trying to at least maybe get a consistency of the lot sizes in, in dealing with frontage because we are asking for relief from the planning board, a waiver on their frontage. So we've, we've, uh, we've redesigned all of the lots uh, so that they're all minimum 125 feet of frontage and a minimum of 100 feet depth for the 125. And that, that's try to, we're trying to stay consistent with the regulations for setbacks and things like that. What does depth mean? It's, it's how deep the lot goes and how wide it stays for that depth. So if you, one of the requirements for the lot depth and width is, is you need to have, uh, the lot needs to be 125 feet wide for a depth of 100 feet deep. And that creates this building box 
uh, square box, which allows you to have a you know decent size, either a large colonial or a fairly you know decent size long uh, raised ranch. In this case, we believe it's going to be best suited for small colonials. Uh, so having said that, what we've ended up with, because we've had to increase the lots in frontage, uh, we have now, with the two lots that are not designated as buildable lots, we have 15. But buildable lots now are down to 13. So we've kind of reduced the side, size and the scale of the, of the uh, subdivision itself. Uh, most, of, uh, most of the roadway here, as you, if, if the butters have been down there, Augusta Ave is, is, is already paved, and also Cross Ave is paved with a, with a barrier here uh, through recommendations you know, from you know, a certain emergency like the, the fire department police that uh, this will be removed, and this will be a thorough, a thorough fare coming through for either people wanting to come this way and go you know, north or northeast, uh, and then still, you know, and still be able to come back this way and go either way. Go well, in, you know, what, we've, what we tried to do is we did not want to extend or connect the entire Augusta Ave. So we stop our roadway here, and where Augusta Ave uh, meets on the other side, where the pavement is now, that's not being touched. So if you, if you live in any of these houses coming down on that side, this is Angela, Angela Terrace and Augusta Ave. Yeah. Well, there is no nothing to do with our subdivision is affecting those lots. We don't have traffic. We're not putting any water no, towards them. The oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not we're not putting any uh, any um, you know we're not touching that those particular areas. I thought. So no, what we're going to do so is uh, Bill can present the changes, okay. and then we're going to take your I'm questions and. Uh, yep. And we'll be able to answer them. All okay. right. Perfect. So you were t saying how many that smaller? Yeah. So you know we end up with uh, with actual, actual buildable lots where through the process we'd have 13 residential, uh, you know, probably four bedroom uh, residential houses to be built, and that would be in its entirety coming in. You'd have lots coming in just from from Prospect Street. You'd have a couple here, one, two here, one at the corner. And then the rest of them will be on a new section of the roadway that would be con constructed up towards the back. One of the uh, one of the main things that we did uh, try to address is is certainly water concerns through down yeah, coming coming the natural topography direction is coming this way uh, off the back of the property towards uh, Augusta Ave. So what we've done we've built the road up that will intercept any of that water coming in, be put in the roadway, and then drain down into this local area here which in turn then drains into the natural drainage going this way. One thing we've done to the back of these lots is we have created the drainage easement and we're going to create an earthen swale. So when these houses are built, whatever runoff from the backyards or halfway of the house comes this way, it'll be intercepted by the swale and again collected and, and distributed into the drainage. So we hope that, you know, those I know were some of the concerns that were raised and we hope that, uh, that that's, that's the way to affect trying to stop that runoff. A swale is just a little depression. Oh. And it, water goes in it, and it's got a slope to it, and it goes, it would come here, and it would run all the way down here into the trunk drainage, which runs down towards Prospect Street. Okay. Uh, that's basically the changes that we've had or what we're proposing. Uh, we do have larger scaled uh, plans uh, of the individual lots. Uh, certainly, if, if uh, when it comes time, surely, if you had, you know, if you want to see the plans larger, specifically where you lived, uh, what effect it may or may not uh, have on you. These these lots here show the where the buildings would go, the grading, what the, what the slopes would do, and also, uh, you know, relative to where your property is. That's pretty much what we're, what the all our revisions uh, details in. Very good. So we'll take. Ready to take some questions sure. from some of the residents. Sure. So what we'll have is whoever has questions can come down this the side and we'll ask them uh, right here, okay? So um, I, I know you have a question. No, I was curious. Uh, let me let me bring the microphone to you. I will put my mask on. We are following all the COVID guidelines, oh, yeah. so thank you all for wearing your masks and social distancing. So thank you.
What's your question? So, is this a through way? Because I thought you didn't, we didn't want that. Like all the way through. Yes, yes. Right now, right now it's all paved. Uh, it's all paved, but it, you'll see that we're at, at the end of at the end of Cross Street. Uh, if I can get the uh, next copy of the plan. Like where Cross Ave starts, I thought that was going to stay blocked off. No, no. Uh, we've had conversations. You know, basically, you know, the, one of the things that uh, I think the fire chief recommended uh, was our, our input would have been to allow that to be opened. It was it was always open before. But right. I believe that right. they had installed the guardrail because of the trash. Exactly. It was becoming a dumping area for everything. So, but that gives you a better flow of traffic. A lot of, a lot of some of these lots may be going this way to, to go north and northeast, yeah. rather than having to come down here, and then having to make the loop back around. Okay. You know. Yeah, no, I just saw the yeah. solid line. Sorry, so. Yeah. People well, that's a that's a property that. line. That's a property line. It's it's just the limits of our line. These, these plans detail a little bit better the roadways where they're going. Did you have any other questions? Um, I'm not now. Okay. Does anybody else want to ask any questions? I'll bring the microphone. Actually, if you can come down here, that way the camera can, um, we can get it on camera for you. I'm on Augusta Ave. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, this, this is your, your lot right here. Yes, yeah, so the only question, I have two questions. Yep. Um, these streets, I don't know if anybody, well, we're all familiar with it, but Cross Street and um, Prospect, these are busy streets in the afternoon and they love to cut through Oak Street and everything. So I'm wondering, uh, I know obviously it has to be a two-way here, but is that gonna be a two-way going back into Cross Street? Man, that's gonna be a lot of traffic. It's, it's, it's proposed because of more of the activity of this half of the division, where they have the access coming out to be able to go northly down Cross okay. Street, or even going this way out to, out to Prospect and going on, down on towards Warren. Okay. Uh, if you really look at coming through here and coming here to enter to try to you know to avoid that intersection i i don't know if we're going to have a lot of cars doing that yeah i don't know how busy the intersection gets at certain times but this is basically i think a longer road to go to be able to get here having to pull in here wait mm -hmm. here and then wait here i think you'll find that they will continue coming down prospect and then mm -hmm. going down cross well, the only, only reason I ask because we've been here almost two and a half years, and there's about a car a day that comes down there thinking that they can cut through well, to the dead end, and then he swing around. Well, so I think that's, that would happen on every. And happen, okay. Street, you know, I'm just glad they're not coming down to dump like they had been for so many years. Yeah, well, we're but kind of policing it. Yeah. yeah and um, the second question I'll sit down is, we're here, but maybe it's something we can talk about after. But I noticed that the, um, the property line proposed when I purchased the property changed. Yeah, what, what, this is one of the lots that we said we had two lots that were not buildable lots. And this is the lot here, as you see, labeled lot 14. Mm -hmm. this, la this lot here is to be combined with and, and conveyed to you, right. the owner here. And what you had was a driveway that came over. So what we, what we, why we did that was to allow this driveway to to still come out, you still have a turning uh, a area back here and still go. Okay. And we'll just, we'll just, you will, we'll need to shortcut just a little bit of the end of that driveway, but it's still giving you that whole driveway. If you can, if you can look a little closer, you can see the, the edge of the driveway mm -hmm. here. I'm yep. just over this line. It's but right we're there. gonna bring it here. We'll shortcut that, just room and seat it, and, and then, you know, that'll be your, your driveway on your own property. Okay. So this, and this, this here, this will be combined you know, over into, into your property. Okay, because the only question I had with the original plans proposed that when I first purchased the property, um, it's like, a, in other words, it's a difference of about 10,000 square feet. That's what I'm saying. From the original plans that I got about a year well, ago. What, 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 we, what we've done here is to allow, again, we, the main 
main purpose of that was to be able to mm -hmm. uh, make sure before your driveway wasn't on your property. So we've, we've secured to make sure all that driveway, except for this little jut out here, would be on your property so you wouldn't have to do anything with that. All right. Now, the reason that we had to redo those lots was because we had to widen all the lots. Mm -hmm. So for us to get our frontage coming around, we had to, we had to widen it by 25 feet. But we still, as you can see here, we went back fairly thick to be able to keep our lot width and depth in here as well and still give you that luxury of, of having this additional land. And you, when you say cut back, you're not cutting back any of the driveway. Well, you can see the driveway comes up here. It actually goes way over here. Okay, so we're cutting off about five, you know, about seven or eight feet of the very end of it. Oh, man. It's, it's probably, you know, still, it's still, uh, mm. I don't know how much you use that drive. I use it. But this this allows so almost the, the, the entire, you know, total majority of your driveway in here now will, will be owned by you, be on your property. All right. Well, we'll talk after. I don't want to I'll take Yeah, we can, we can, we yeah. can extend this a little bit more. It's just that, you know, it gets... This yeah. would be the new property line. All right. So I'm going to try to hold the microphones to everybody so everybody can hear you at home. Um, I, before we move on, I'd just like to recognize that Mr. John Messier is here from Mayor Sullivan's office. So thank you for being here, John. Um, Mr. McMillan, did you have a question? or? Do you want to just, uh, so people can hear you or hear your question? Good evening. Just a point of information, uh, the Cross Ave, that guardrail was placed there uh, because of the complaints from the residents that the cut, everyone was cutting through, going up from Cross, uh, Guster, crossing over Prospect, and through, it was a high rate of speed going up to Cross Ave. So I placed the guardrail there with permission from the uh, Traffic Commission and the uh, DPW Commissioner. So that's the reason why that guardrail is there. Just probably should stay, or well, something should be there. Yeah, again, we're, we're really, we're You're going to have a. There's a lot of traffic that goes through, through there, so. Oh, no, just, oh. You, it's up to it's up to the planning, the zoning, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I live on the corner of Augusta, and uh, I mean not Augusta. I live on the corner of Angel Terrace and Cross, um, so. That's the reason why, when I was the council there, and Shirley has now taken over and doing a great job, I might add, um, that we put the guardrail there for that reason because it was high rate of speed. They were trying to get up. Instead of taking a right onto Prospect and a left onto Cross, they're just shooting across from Augusta. Yeah. And, you know, Mr. Nezer, you, you know, Mr. You know, that they, they, you had trouble when you lived there. You know, Hepsi, I mean, sorry, Nezer, I'm sorry. Yeah. So I just, uh, I'm glad someone from Cross Ave is here to, to you know, mention that. But that's the only, the only thing wrong I see with this plan. That's about it. Everything else looks fine. So I, you know, but I'm not at a, not a direct to butter, though. But this. Uh, so just please kick it to the Yeah, I, you know, again, again, one of the reasons for this, for this uh, uh, meeting, meeting here is to have these comments come out, you know, so. We can address them, you know, for the planning board meeting. We certainly can. Uh, can uh, we'll review this again with uh, hopefully the fire chief and or the police chief, and then uh, you know, see if uh, what their you know up, up to date current recommendations are. Uh, we will be having stop signs at these at these roadway intersection things like that. So as far as it being a thoroughfare, you, there'll be houses here. There'll be more activity than just a cut through. So that normally, you know, will slow your traffic down. Uh, but it's, it's more of a safety, for us, it's more of an access uh, uh, question, you know, so that fire apparatus, police, they can come in down off a of cross street, get right over on Cross Ave in, into the longer end of this road rather than having to go all the way back around and coming back in the back way off a of prospect. So it was taken in there for consideration for those factors. Uh, but certainly we'll revisit with the, with the uh, emergency control people, the fire department police, and see what their recommendations are. Come on up, sir. 
I was just curious about the, uh, the drainage the issue. Uh, I'm at 158 Augusta Avenue. So you have a house being built right behind my house. Okay, so then the farm plan is, uh, which would be, uh, this is the end of the road here, so there's, okay. there's Augusta here. Was it yeah. 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 What was the, what was the uh, 158. So you're in the middle one right in here. This yeah, is you here. Yeah, this is yeah. me right here. And this is what we, uh, on the first meeting, I know there were some concerns by, by were you there, sir? The yeah, first I was meeting, there, uh, yeah. And, and this is, but before we didn't have this square, we just had, it was gonna be a flattened out, we could have had basically walkout backs in here. But what we've done is that we now will be putting just a 30. Still, can you just speak into the microphone? There you go, thank you. <laughs> we'll be putting in a 30 foot wide drainage area here. It's a drainage easement. And then with this, what you see here, it's a, this is a depression in the earth, and it's, 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 it's constructed so that any water coming this way, what used to go in the, into the backs of your yards on along here, will now be directed into this, and then it will be draining down here, all the way down along, and then come into a, into a collection area here, and then go into the natural drainage, the existing drainage that's, that's in Augusta Ave. So in essence, we've stopped all of this surface water coming this way, you know, and that's what that's the purpose of the swale. Okay. So, so you say. Um, so are there going to be like pipes and stuff that's running through there, or? I mean, yeah. What, what happens with the swale? Is if you have if you have a backyard over here, where it comes down, and it would come down, drop into this depression. And then all the water would go that way, away from the back of your property. It would come this way, collect in this, in this uh, little trench area, and it would be all be directed down towards this area here and back into the, into the drainage down that way, instead of coming across here through your yard and out onto the Augusta Rav surface here for drainage. And yeah, what guarantee is that's going to work? That's, that's the design have? principle of it. It doesn't allow because this backside is going to be higher than this middle. So anything that comes down through here will hit in this lower area and then naturally drain. This, this, is a, this is the point that drains from high to low. It does this all the way down until it gets down to this point. Okay. And how far, how far back are you guys planning on? How far back you plan on build, take, how many trees are coming down? Well, whatever, I guess my a, property line. The trees I mean, along are we gonna, the property line here, we're trying to stay minimum 10 feet away from the property line so that any of the more native or natural trees, the larger trees can stay. And once this is constructed, uh, you know, normally we'll, we'll do some plantings along there on the backside, and that gives both coverage uh, and, and uh, you know, privacy for these new houses uh, as well as privacy for the houses that are still okay. abutting. And uh, my neighbor here, she said you guys still haven't met the, uh, the requirements of uh, the planning. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. If she's a professional about this. So you want to talk? Yeah, I don't know if she wants to say anything. <laughs> I thought you said you, you told me they didn't meet the requirements of of this. Uh, Okay, thank you. Just, I just got the copy of the plans like 10, 15 minutes ago, I'm asking if a copy could be put on the website because I looked on the website and I could not find a copy of the plans. Mr. Main, you know, they're, they're not on the website yet, correct? Uh, I looked for them, I could not find them. I'm just okay, asking, okay, could, could they please be put on the website so we could look at them? And then same questions that I raised a year ago, it still appears that like 90% of the lots do not meet the subdivision rules and regulations for frontage. And let's see, none of them have a minimum 30,000 square feet. Not even, like most of them don't even have half of that. So why do we have rules and regulations if you're not gonna meet them? So the microphone. 
I see Attorney McCluskey. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, one of the reasons uh, that we're, we're here is to go to the planning board. The planning board has the right to waive uh, uh, what we call frontage. They have the right under the rules and regulations of subdivision control to, to review a project and to waive if they feel it's consistent with other neighboring lots, things of that nature, and where there is a need for housing, uh, then, and then, you know, it's just, that's, they'll, they'll take everything into consideration on their vote. Now, we can't, uh, some of the things that we're asking for relief is required by the Board of Appeals, but we can't apply to the Board of Appeals until we go to the Planning Board first and have their review uh, approved to allow us to go to the Board of Appeals. Now, the Board of Appeals will take other action than the Planning Board has authority over, and if we go to the Board of Appeals and they have recommendations, of course, everything would be incorporated as well as, as what the Planning Board initial reg, reg, uh, recommendations would be. We'd end up probably most definitely going back to the Planning Board for the final sign-off. But we still, this is only a first step process to be able to get our review and be able to go into the, into the Board of Appeals to get certain waivers on, on uh, lot area, uh, things of that nature, and, and frontage. But the planning board also has, has authority uh, to be able to waive. They can't, they can't grant a variance, but they have the authority to waive frontage under their subdivision control laws. So it's a two-step process. We're just, you know, still in the first step. Do you want to come up and speak into the microphone? Thank you. So no, I didn't realize that. So I'm just wondering, um, as, a, as a novice understanding this, why would you start out with needing that many um, waivers or exceptions? It's not like it's one house or one house there, it's the whole thing. Why, that seems in bad faith, frankly. There's nothing in bad faith. Well, why would you start out that so let's way? let's have them answer, attorney. It's, 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 uh, that, that's a very unfair statement to say that this is in bad faith. A very unfair statement, okay? Uh, because the, the first step is that we're, we're here, you know, we're having a neighborhood meeting. You want to call that in bad faith? I don't think so. So, so what we're asking you is to take a look at the changes uh, to, this is a process. This is a, a something that's very open Shirley's been wonderful to uh, in, engage the, the neighbors and, and, and to invite us here to, to speak to you about the potential issues. And um, what we really want to talk about is, is what we look at on the ground here is, is potentially uh, something that we can do, what we're going to ask the city to do, what we're going to ask the Zoning Board of Appeals to do. And you're involved in the process throughout the whole thing. So that's why I asked the question. Right. So um, that's the answer on the, on the question of bad faith. Um, was there anything substantive you wanted to ask about that? That was a basic question. Okay. Uh, we're going to bring the microphone, but if you don't mind coming up so we can thank you. Thank you, Attorney McCluskey. Here you go. You, thank you. It's, it's just my opinion, right, that you don't start out down here and ask us to meet you here. You've got rules you should be starting up here and maybe asking a few and coming down here. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, there you go. Uh, just to answer one of, your, you know, one of the questions that were asked, again, the procedure in the city is under, under the city regulations and their policy is we need to apply to the planning board first for their consideration. We put our subdivision in front of them, and that's what these meetings are for. You'll also have an opportunity, uh, you know, October 6th at the meeting. It's a Zoom meeting, unfortunately, not in person. But any other questions you have, you have, you know, you have the right to you write, write letters into them or, or make recommendations uh, by that means. But again, it's a process that's set, policy is set, policy is set for this process by the town, the city planning board, as well as in cooperation with the Board of Appeals. Again, we still have to go with the Board of Appeals. And, and this is a preliminary process.
preliminary subdivision approval. It's not the final approval. Uh, it's, it's the first step. Then we go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Then we go back to the, to the Planning Board. So there's lots that goes on here. And, uh, and we're, not, we're not keeping anything from you. We're not violating, violating any rules. We're not starting here. We're not starting there. We're starting with what the rules are. Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions? Oh, great. Come on. Come over here. There you go. Come on down. So, good evening. My name is Penny Lou Yarde, and I live at 43 Earl Street, and I'm here with my neighbor, Pamela Pruitt. She lives at 39 Earl Street. Yes. And so I'm looking at your map. Up here? I live at 43. Okay. So I'm thinking that you're going to build. The opposite side of the street yes, and the lot, that empty lot in front of my house, all the trees. I'm thinking they're going to come down. Yep. Where is Augusta Street going? Where, where is this? Is this starting on Earl Street as well? Because we live on a dead end street, and it's a quiet street. And I've been on Earl Street. I've owned my home for 15 years. I believe that uh, this, is, this is Earl Street right here. This would be the end of the, uh, of the new road coming in. So you're on the opposite side of Earl Street, so you'd be over here. We aren't disrupting or doing anything that has any effect on these properties, you know, as far as drainage or directing any water. There will be trees that some, t some will be taken down, basically where the house is being constructed here. So you have an open area here. I would, I, would, I would tend to think that these would probably stay in a natural state. Over here, there is some grading that we'll be doing. But again, this is a removed area. I would think that that may be left as much as possible in a natural state. But the construction of the roadway is, is in, in here. And that will, that will uh, eliminate the trees in that particular area. But again, it's, uh, we're not, we're not put having any adverse effects with anything coming this way towards, the towards traffic, Earl Street. The Augusta Ave traffic that's going to, towards Earl Street? This, that has, oh, the, that's, that's, that's a dead end. Yeah, okay. this is a turnaround, so they can't go any further. Okay. They turn around, and it's really just for the residents themselves. Well, the, you know, they're, they're intended to be, you know, we've shown, you know, like four bedroom colonial homes, uh, you know, that'll be, I, I think, we very attractive subdivision when we're, fin when we're done with it. Bill, could you tell me what would be the approximate distance between that home and, and a home across the street? Yeah. Well, this, the house itself would be approximately at least, uh, uh, at least 100 and probably 100 and 130 feet here and another 100, two, 230, and another 50, so 280, almost 300 feet. So a football field? Oh, yeah, at least. <laughs> but again, this is not, nothing in the backs of these. No, you are, anything on these lots is not being touched. So whatever, whatever privacy you have for that, that's not going to be disrupted as far as anything to do with those lots. Again, whatever's left over here, they're not going to, I wouldn't imagine, clear cutting in here. You can see we don't have any proposed grading in this area. So that's something that we would think, even for the enhancement of the lot, to give them privacy as well, uh, would be left in a natural state. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, come on down, Mr. Coleman, come on. I just think it's um, the next meeting you guys are having October uh, 6th, right? And it's a Zoom meeting? That's a planning Zoom, Zoom meeting. meeting. It's yeah, so I, I just think that's, I don't know who organized that, but I think that's unfair for it to be a Zoom meeting. That's it's something I'm, important like that. So, so I think the, this should be in person. So this, that the October 6th is the planning, sorry planning board meeting. So that's why we're having this meeting this evening. I felt that people needed to see these plans up close. I know sometimes it's tough to see them uh, with COVID, uh, with COVID-19, you know, with, it's been very tough, but I, that's why we, 
We pushed for this meeting this evening. Um, I wanted the residents to be able to ask their questions because there was a large turnout last time. So this is the opportunity. Yeah, it, it, you know, if I could add to that, you know, we, because of the COVID-19, we have put off for, for months to, to come in here. Uh, we felt that for us to give a presentation, the least we would hope to get, and thank you, Shirley, was to get at least a community meeting here. Uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, uh, with the Zoom, it is difficult. It's difficult on all the abutters. It's as difficult with the presentation of it. Uh, it's harder to do a presentation on the Zoom for sure than it is to at least you have an opportunity to see what the layouts are, what the roadways are doing, and ask your questions here, and at least a little bit more efficient. But because of the COVID-19, we, we couldn't wait any longer, but uh, we're doing the best we can. And thank you for you know, participating. So just to follow up with that question, this is um, a neighborhood meeting. This is the abutters, uh, for the abutters of the subdivision. These are, those are the people that were contacted to come to this meeting. It was so you were able to get an up close look at the plans. A lot of people, I did receive calls. Many people due to the virus were not going to come out and uh, come to this meeting. They asked me some questions. Uh, I told them that this is going, thank you to BCA. Uh, local cable um, access uh, channel. This will be televised on um, cable and it's also on YouTube. So uh, people, abutters can, uh, can watch this. They can get a close up look at the plans. Here are some of your questions. I did include my phone number with all the, um, when I went door to door and put the uh, announcement for this meeting. So everybody has my information. They can call me. The planning board meeting, they, the planning, board has meetings every month and you know thank God for technology you know it's great that where we can have these meetings via they can have the meetings via zoom but um, I have to say that's why we pushed for this is because sometimes it's even difficult when it's in person to really go up and take a look at the plans many of you were there last year when we when you were before the planning board and we met I think the group uh, went and met in council um, in the council conference room and you were able to look at the plans up close so uh, unfortunately that we can't do that this time around but um, you know you will be able to follow the meeting on zoom but as attorney McCluskey said and mr. self said um, you know this is just the start and uh, the residents these are all our meetings are open meetings and you will be able to ask your questions and follow the process. So um, I, I don't know if anybody else has any questions. Anybody else wants to ask anything? No, no questions? Okay. Um, so I mean, that's, w once again, people can, you can watch this on cable or on YouTube. I don't know if you want to make any last comments, anything, no, Attorney McCluskey? No? Okay, we also have Mr. Hebshi here who is, the uh, property owner, correct? Mr. Hepshi owns the property. So thank you for being here. Thank you everybody for being here. I know it's tough coming out, um, but this is keeping the lines of communication open. Uh, I know that uh, anytime we've had any questions for the engineer or attorney McCluskey, they're always available um, to answer them uh, for us. So once again, thank you. Thank you to the school department for allowing us to use the, the space. They opened up the space just for us this evening. Um, with that, have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you.